before I spray this thing, I wanted to get the underside coated with some port 15. Sarah wanted to make sure that, you know, just everything got covered down here. She just didn't want the chance of there being any more rust and she kind of wanted to cover over some of this ugliness a little uh, surface rust and stuff that's poking through all up underneath this. So what I did was just run some tape on this edge here so that I made sure that the Pour 15 isn't gonna get on the outside on any of the painted stuff. Taped over all the little holes so that the Pour 15 doesn't you know, seep through the holes and get on the outside as well. Pressure washed. I got this up on the lift yesterday. We pressure washed the whole underside. And then this morning, I went around with the red scotch pad and just gave it a quick scuff up everywhere uh, just to knock any loose stuff off and also give a, you know, a little bit of a scratch in the surface. And then I'm just gonna brush this on. Um, you can spray it as well. I, sp I spray this stuff a lot. Um, but it actually self levels really nice with the brush. And I figured, you know, cause I want to make sure, you know, I could definitely mask this off, right? And make sure that nothing got on the outside and I could spray it. Um, but honestly, it's going to be way easier to just brush it. It'll self level. It'll look exactly the same anyway. And that way I don't have to worry about getting a whole bunch of overspray on the outside. Don't have to mask off the whole bed. Um, and honestly, I can probably get in like the nooks and crannies a little bit better, just reaching up by hand with the brush and getting stuff in there than trying to fit a spray gun, you know, like up inside the grooves, to, like get up in there and stuff. So yeah, let's get started on this. But here we are. We got this thing all sanded down in 800 grit with the DA, and then went back over it with a gray scotch pad with scuff stuff, hit all the edges and stuff, went over the whole face of it just to really clean it up real good and get a nice uniform scratch on the whole thing. It looks beautiful. It's ready to get sprayed. About time. Um, one last thing we gotta do that's a little bit of a roadblock before we get there is these corners. Let me show you. Have this little textured bit down at the bottom that we gotta replicate on this side. So I'll show you guys a little trick for how to get that real nice like this where it's got the doesn't have like a real harsh tape line. It kind of fades into the, the factory paint a little bit. I'll show you how to do that. But first, I gotta get this thing all masked up and then we'll shoot that. We're gonna be using the U-Pole Gravitex here. It's just a 1K like chip guard stuff. You'd spray it with the little Schust gun, this guy. And uh, yeah, so we'll get that sprayed. We gotta wait about six hours, right? And then I can top coat it. So we'll be painting this later on today. I'm gonna get that on first thing this morning. So it's got plenty of time to sit and yeah, let's get this thing masked up. So essentially what I did was uh, I took the micrometer and just used it uh, to measure how high up this uh, little line in the rock chip guard comes up on this side so we can match it on this side. So I just measured using this body line here as reference and then I'm just going to take the edge of the micrometer and scribe just a little line right there that's gonna get covered up with the chip guard anyway, so we're not worried that there's a little scratch. And then I'm gonna take and scribe 
a little line on this side as well for reference. And then we'll double check with the tape measure to make sure, because at the end of the day, like the, the shape under here from the factory is really weird. You can see on that side, it's all like kind of ripply and you know funky looking on the very bottom. So what I need to do on this side is use this line and like this bend in the body as reference for where I'm gonna place this. Because otherwise, if I just follow this line down here, it's gonna be all wavy and ripply and it's gonna look really weird. So, eight and a half. I'll take that. So, we've got some eighth inch tape. We're gonna go ahead and stick it down on this side. Pull it across. It's gonna take, sometimes it takes a few tries to get this set just right. Just like that. And making this bend is a little bit more like a, an art than it is a science. Just gotta make sure it kinda looks right from every angle. Okay. And keep in mind, this isn't my final line, right? So this is what I'm using as a baseline. And then I'm gonna use this quarter inch tape to move a little bit up. So essentially, we're gonna create that fade by setting this tape an eighth inch up and then putting the soft foam edge tape along the edge of this so that the overspray from the chip guard can kind of fall under that tape and kind of roll the edge off a little bit underneath it so that we get that nice like tapered in look like they got on the other side. Okay, let me go ahead and measure this again. Cool. All right. So now we got that nice crisp fine line tape stuck under there. Looks good, nice and straight. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we got the gravel guard applied, got it all laid out nice and smooth, waited a few hours on it, and then we were off to paint. I already had it waxed and greased with solvent based and uh, an alcohol before I even brought it into the booth. So the final wipe was just kind of uh, hitting it with water base and the microfiber, getting all the last little bits of dust and nibs off there, and then just a quick run over with the anti-static gun. I've got my Walcom set up with the blend clear and then the DV1 set up with my base coat. The blending clear I believe I shot at 24, 25 PSI. It's not anything super critical. Essentially I just use it as a wet bed to catch the overspray from the metallic to make sure that there's no halo effect or any kind of weirdness in the blend area. Just making sure we get a nice uniform blend. The base coat I'm spraying on this is Diamond Solvent Base. Um, personally, not a huge fan of the system. I feel like it's kind of feels like paint technology from like 1999. And you know, you can call me a hater if you want, and that's fine. I just really don't care for Diamond. I think a lot of their products are overpriced for what they are. However, uh, this color match was a little bit difficult and I will say that Diamond's standard chip on it did pretty much hit it spot on. So just decided to save myself the time of trying to tint in a different system and just went with Diamond for this one. I will say that that's probably the most redeeming quality of Diamond's paint system is it has been around for so long that they do have a pretty extensive color library with service formulas and stuff like that. 
and it does make color matching a lot easier when you can just pick a chip and just go with it and not have to worry about tinting and stuff like that. However, I do also have a problem with a lot of times their chip not necessarily matching the spray outs that I get from them. On each additional coat of base I'm doing on this, I am still using the wet bed. Uh, I do see a lot of guys just throwing it down on their first coat and that's fine. You know, when it comes to paint, there's a million different ways to get a good end product and everyone's got their own techniques. I just like to use my wet bed in between each coat. I find that it really helps with making sure that I don't have any dry over spray. I don't have any nasty graininess uh, around the edge of my blends and stuff like that that I have to try to bury later on. And this color was a little bit transparent to begin with, so I didn't really have to do too much to get it to blend in there. I just kind of walked each coat out a little bit further up the panel. Uh, I did wind up using the, uh, the static gun in between coats as kind of like a blow gun. Uh, I know it's not something you generally do with solvent, I uh, wasn't really force drying it per se. The coat had already flashed. Um, there was just a little bit of base down in that, that body line that was wanting to stay wet a little bit longer than I liked. Um, so I was just moving some air over it just to make sure that it, you know, flashed off properly and we didn't have any issues with, uh, you know, solvent pop or um, any kind of dying back or adhesion issues or anything like that. The clear I'm using on this job is by a company out of Canada called Duracell. I've been using a lot of their products recently and I've really been liking them. This is their 9500 Speed Clear. It goes on two coats, super heavy, back to back, just wet on wet, no flash time in between. And I think it came out with a really perfect finish for what I was going for on this. It matched the orange peel really spot on. I honestly wasn't really too concerned if it did pull back or die back on me a tiny bit because I was trying to replicate the finish of like a 30 whatever year old paint job and it didn't die back of course because this stuff's pretty bomb but all in all man I am super happy with how it came out and also I didn't want to pile on a bunch of mills on top of this factory paint we're just trying to keep it as original as possible so I felt like this clear was just perfect fit the bill for what I needed to do. I'd say all in all, man, this thing came out pretty spot on. The repair came out super clean. Let me try to get it without a glare for y'all. And no seam. Body work came out straight. The uh, texture match on this came out freaking awesome. You can see, looks just like the other side. Got that smoother, chunky finish. Not the super, super chunky. But color match came out on point. Blend came out on point. I think I managed to replicate the factory orange peel really well. The whole job only got a few pieces of dust in it. I think we got a run right here, a little tiny baby. And one right here. Oh, actually, no, that's just a, that was just a chip that was in the old paint. I did go around on a couple spots and dab in some touch-up paint over top of some of the nastier chips. Like there's a couple right here. Uh, where was? And I can't even see them now. It's hard to see, but all we got left now is to uh, put the stripe on it. I'm gonna replicate that factory stripe again. And then I'm going to actually redo the flares and the side molding trim uh, in that like satin uh, gray color, like, like metallic gray or whatever it was. And yeah, all in all, super happy with how that came out. I think it's going to look great on the truck. I can't wait to see it all assembled. Till next time, y'all.